Hi, I'm Steve Forbes, and you're watching Traders Nation. Welcome back. You are tuned into Traders Nation. All right, we got uh, Brian, Brad Williams with us. Sorry about that, Brad. Uh, we're going to be talking about U.S. household uh, record debt here today, Brad. So what's going on? We hit a record high of $12.96 trillion. Brad, did we, did we not learn anything from 2008, 2009? Yeah, and I guess with the economy, you know, jobs improving like it is, people are taking on more debt. You know, one of the... Uh, the big areas there's been some improvements like in delinquencies uh um you know mortgage delinquencies that actually improved and and uh the the big thing is the auto loans because it's the it's not the banks and the credit unions but the finance companies that are seeing an uptick and although that that really doesn't impact the economy as a whole by itself it's it's a leading indicator yeah well did they tighten up those loans in fact didn't they tighten up not only the auto loans but they also tighten up the house the mortgage loans but now, I've been reading reports, Brad, that uh, they're starting to loosen those restrictions up once again. I mean, I can't help but go back. Haven't we learned anything? I agree with you, and, and it, it scares me when I drive through a neighborhood and, and I see 0% down yeah. financing, and I'm like, oh, God, here we go again. Sure, yeah, right back again. Deja vu, if you will. All right, so ironically, MasterCard reports shoppers spent over $800 billion during the season. Uh, more than ever before, boosted by growing consumer confidence, of course. I like the growing consumer confidence part, but what is the takeaway from this report? More debt. Well, you know, one thing to look at is, is how um, America's buying habits are going to change the economy in, in ways that a lot of people don't think about. Yeah. You know, for example, more and more buying online, which means that the brick-and-mortar retailers, you're going to see job losses there. Sure. But you're also going to see those who invest in REITs and things like that yeah. impacted because if more are buying online and brick-and-mortars are getting less and less of a share, then that real estate that those brick-and-mortar stores are in is going to decrease in value, and a lot of REITs are invested in those. Yeah, they certainly are. In fact, I've got a couple myself. I like the dividends. Uh, on a couple rates that I'm in, I won't mention them because then I'll have to disclose your disclaimer. But I see it. I see a depreciation in value in those. Those rates are taking a hit right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's going to be the trend. You know, it's it's uh, you know there'll be some stores that are draw them in, but for the most part, I know my buying habits over the last decade have yeah. changed considerably. Yeah. I, I would say ninety percent of the presents we bought this year, you know, we got online. Right. All right, so let's talk about the delinquencies on uh, credit cards, things like that. Um, those seem to be on the rise, are they? Well, from what I've read, a lot of your delinquency increase is your subprime auto loans that don't come from banks in your typical uh, auto loan companies sure. they are coming from finance companies. And, and you know, one of the reports I read that, that made me take pause was they said, you know, this is not going to be a, a, a killer for the economy, but it's a leading indicator that those at the lowest credit level, if they're struggling to make their payments, that, yeah. that you know, that's going to have an impact. Yeah. But, you know, I think we, there is a market for folks that have credit problems maybe even with a combination of earning problems there is a market for that that's needed there to have to have those folks be able to get the loans for the cars that they need to get to wherever transportation is critical some for some folks but there's got to be some type of balance there right um balance risk balance reward for the companies that provide the loans and then reward for those that actually need them sometimes really badly your thoughts yeah and, and I agree with you and I think what you'll see is kind of a divergence in you know the banks and and those traditional auto lenders are probably tightening up their standards just like they've done in home equity lines and mortgages and then you got that that bottom tier that's that's got much lower credit score requirements and that's that's where the real impacts gonna be all right all right so we'll keep an eye out for that what about credit cards in general uh, we're watching credit cards debt go up uh, the average credit card uh, debt, I think, is around forty-eight hundred dollars. I mean, I could be wrong. I thought I read that. Your thoughts yeah, on that? What's, that? That reflects what I, some of the things I've read. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we're gonna, we may even continue that continue continue to see that rise uh, as as people feel optimistic. But you know, really, if I was optimistic, I I don't mind spending money. We need to get back kind of into a consumer market. But I like to see a little bit more savings there too. 
And I don't necessarily see that we're seeing that. It's like this euphoria. Hey, I'm making a little bit more money or in the near future because of tax cuts, I'm going to have a little bit more money in my pocket. And there's like this euphoria that's going on. But I think there needs to be some personal management too with their finances. Your thoughts? <laughs> Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, and, and one of the issues we've got with with the Federal Reserve lowering interest rates so low to keep the economy going during sure. the last eight years, that the incentive is not to save. You know, it doesn't pay you any money to have money in a CD in the no. bank. Yeah. You know, it used to be that, you know, if I had a million-dollar portfolio come into my office for the first time, yeah. they'd have four or $500,000 in CDs earning 4 or 5% as yeah. their safe money alternative. Right. And I just don't see that anymore because the banks aren't paying anything and if you if you're not incentivizing people to save then you're hurting your economy long term if the only people that are getting paid off are those that are taking risks that's so true i mean a sliver of a point is not much and like you said it it doesn't add up you got a million dollars yeah you want it safe you want to preserve it you want to preserve that capital but when you're getting a sliver of a point uh, it doesn't necessarily pay it really doesn't <laughs> Yeah, and the, and the downside is as interest rates start rising, which they need to. Sure. I mean, ten-year Treasuries average four, four and a half percent, and and they got as low as one point four two, you know, about five years ago. Yeah. You're, you, as as those interest rates start rising and people start pulling the money out of the market, is going to have a, a negative impact on the stock market. Yeah. All right. So we got about three minutes. Let's, I want to move on to mortgages. Uh, mortgages uh, make up for about uh, eight point seven trillion dollars in. Uh, in borrowing and so certainly I think we should be concerned about that you and I touched briefly on on uh, easing the re easing the requirements to get mortgage loans seconds things of that nature certainly should we be keeping an eye on, mor on the mortgage lending area too yeah, and I think, you know, at the uh, it, the government's involvement in mortgage has really warped the market. Yeah. And so, you know, when, when the government guarantees stuff, people tend to be a little more lax in how they give the money out. Sure. Now, there, there's, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But I, like I said, when I start seeing, and I see them regular, 0%, no money down, or, or not zero percent, but no money down mortgages. That scares me. Yeah, it certainly does. I I am the believer of twenty percent. That way, you got a little skin in the game, and you're not going to walk away so easily. Years ago, there was that strategic walk away. Yeah, you know, it didn't make sense to stay in it. Take me twenty five years to get back. Yeah, I'm just going to simply walk out of the game. Well, I mean, if you got some skin in the game, ten, twenty percent, then it's not so easy to walk away from when you got that much in it. Well, and it also incentivizes you to buy within your means and not stretch. <laughs> you know, realtors are always, you know, always being told that, or, or, or I should say, are always guilty of trying to get you to buy the most house you can. And, sure. You know, that have, when you have to put so much money down, it makes you more realistic about what you can really afford. Yeah, certainly. They sound like my good friend Larry Wingate. <laughs> buy what you can afford, and that's it, right? Um, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Um, all right, so is there anybody out there, we're running out of time, is there anybody out there, for instance, let's say the feds, the federal government or anything, are they watching the signs of consumer debt um, being marched going forward, marching, and, and more debt is piling up. Anybody out there kind of keeping an eye on consumer debt indexes, anything like that? Well, you know, I, I hope so. I yeah. mean, uh, I think a lot of times you get the, they get caught up in the euphoria of, of the economies moving forward, and they start, you know, neglecting, okay, what are the implications of this? You know, are they good or bad? Sure. Because every, every movement has got good and bad implications. You just want to make sure that the, yeah. the good outweighs the bad. It's okay to get through the landmine, right, field, as long as you know where to step. All right, where can we find you, Mr. Brad Williams? Uh, you can go to askbradwilliams.com. So if you've got an investing or finance question, just yeah. ask Brad Williams. Awesome. Askbradwilliams.com. Head on over there. Brad, hey, we appreciate your time today. Have a great day. Oh, thank you. You bet. All right, we'll be right back. Stay tuned.